Hi, I'm Joan Sheridan and I'm an inkle weaver and I love to get people started inkling and a good place to do that is with shoelaces. You can make flat shoelaces or round shoelaces, but today we're going to focus on round shoelaces. So here are the tools that you need. You need an inkle loom. Any size loom will do, even a small miniature one. Some Painter's tape is helpful. Of course, a belt shuttle. Oh, a belt shuttle has flat on one side and a knife shape on the other side. And Ikea bag clips are helpful to act as extra hands. And I'll show you how I use them as we go along. A piece of a sticky uh, rubber shelf paper under the loom it prevents it from moving. Some good sharp scissors, your yarn, and something to hold your yarn, and a pattern. Our pattern has 15 threads, and you can make it any odd number, maybe from 11 to 17. It depends on the size of your yarn. I'm using eight for brassard unmercerized cotton and I'm using that so that you can see it better on camera but it ends up being a weight that is better suited to like a drawstring on a uh, hoodie uh, rather than shoelaces. So um, I'm going to turn this around so that you can look over my back and see what I'm seeing and we'll get weaving. When you are weaving tubularly, you get a choice of having an S twist here or a Z twist here. And it depends on whether you bring your, sh your uh, shuttle over the top of your warp or under your warp. And when we're weaving tubularly, we're also weaving in a spiral. So that causes the twists to happen in the band. So I wanted to see you to see where we were going and we'll start warping this loom. So following my pattern, <clears throat> I start out with a heddled purple. And I take uh, the painter's tape and tape it to the top of the loom, come around from below, make sure my heddle uh, knot is on the bottom of the heddle peg so it doesn't interfere with making sheds. And if it's heddled, it goes over the top peg and I'll make the shortest um, warp possible here. So. I like to cross off as I do them. My next thread is a green and it's going to be unheddled. And neither of those are going to be used again for a couple threads. So we can tie them here and, and uh, keep a little tension on the loom so it looks a little neater. And now we're going to have three of the turquoise in a row. And I have my heddles all lined up on my knee so they're uh, easily accessible. So we've got three of these, one, one unheddled. and a third heddled. One, two, three. And now we have another green. So we're gonna pick out the green and keep our other two taped down. And our green is unheddled. And our next is three purples. 
Now it doesn't matter if you get a little twisting in your threads. Um, it will end up in the area that's waste in the loom. It doesn't matter at all. So we have three purples. Oops, and that one should have been heddled. So I'll go back and put my heddle on. And one unheddled. Another heddled. And there's my three purples. Past the middle. Now we're on to the green. One green. Unheddled. Three teal, and again we start with a heddled. Unheddled. Not making this look very graceful. Get our knot down to the bottom. And we're not using this color anymore. After we've got our three, so we can trim our end about four inches, find the other end that was here taped and waiting. Do a square knot and a half. A half is just for good measure. And then we have one more green and we'll be done with the green. And this is an unheddled thread. Trim it. and tie it. Make sure you push all your threads back before you do the tying so you have reasonably consistent tension. I always try to tie toward the back of the back peg. In this case, on this loom, it's also the tension peg, which reminds me to tell you that when you start warping, you should have a little space that will allow you to add more tension when you're uh, completed with this. And now we have one last purple. And it is heddled. And we can clip that thread find the other end, make another square knot and a half, I'll do a quick check and compare. I should have a purple, two teal, two purple, two teal, one purple. So um, I know that my top is correct, uh, the heddled threads, and between the heddled threads I should have a green, a teal, another green, a purple, a green, a teal, and a green. So my threads are in the right order, and I can trim these. I leave about a half an inch. 
And now we get to weave. We don't need our pattern anymore. We've used it. Now, first thing we're going to do is tighten up our tension a little bit. And then we're going to put our separating sticks in. I always start up and on the right, and I'm using a small craft stick. You can use anything that's flat that'll, that'll fit in here. I have used toothpicks. I don't like those though because I usually poke myself. Um, but these little guys are handy and they're easily available. So I've set it up as plain weave. And it's got to be flat at this point. Push it together as much as possible. And now we're going to uh, insert the shuttle and start weaving. You're always going to enter from one side. I'm right-handed, so I always enter from the right, and I want it to be the next shed. So I want the shed where the interlacement will allow that um, stick to stay in. And I'm going to not worry about my tail. I'm just going to bring it back here and get it out of the way. Because I'm going to cut my ends and finish them in some way to make them into that shoelace. So I'm going to come under. And now I want to have the purple shed. I'm going to come under and I want the green shed. And it's starting to go round. But it takes just a little bit to establish that. And when you get back over here, pull hard. You don't have to beat real hard. I think you can see the spiral nicer when you don't, but pulling it hard mean, makes it so you don't see the weft. And once you've woven just a little bit, you can take these out so they don't get in your way. Always under. Okay, I've woven enough so that we can see how it twists. And you can see that by my going under the band, I am getting a Z twist. So if I had gone over the band, I would get an S twist. I told you I'd, how I, I wanted to show you how I use the Ikea clips. And one way is, um, I put a little guy right down here on the heddles so it when I have a wider band it keeps them from coming off but it also keeps them neat and tidy and when I take this off I usually clip right in here and then my heddles just come out and they're contained and I put them in a container for the next time and and they're just easy to use and they're organized and when I'm done weaving, what I do is put my shuttle in the next shed. And um, depending on the bandwidth, uh, put it like that. And now my shuttle is secure. My loom I can grab by the end and I'm off and running. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video and you get inspired to weave on an inkle or to try weaving shoelaces please visit my website at joansheridan.com to see my fiber adventures and visit our store at heritagespinning.com or real live in person in Lake Orion, Michigan. Thanks for watching.